I'm sorry, everybody, that I had to stop my live. Unfortunate, it, fortunately, it's just fireworks, but I had to make sure because it was starting to get very close to the house and I wanted to make sure that we were fine. I'm going to start the story over again, if you all don't mind. <sighs> Once, very long ago, when the world was very young, a lot like all of you, there was a great and mighty kingdom by the sea. Now, this was an African kingdom, so it wasn't like other kingdoms having tall castles. Instead, there was a compound where the king and the queen lived. One, the middle of the compound, there was a beautiful house where all the people could come and speak to the king and queen and discuss things with them. And the king and queen had their own little smaller house. And in that house, they would talk about things that troubled their hearts or made them happy. And then there were small houses all around. And the small houses that were all around were for the, the king's children. It was a large and beautiful compound. And also... The warriors who took care of the kingdom lived among them and those who took care of the king and queen. Now, in between the compound and the village where all the other people lived, there was a beautiful ocean and a great deal of sand. And the people would go there every day and pray to the creator. And the four guardian winds would speak to the people and take care of them. The north wind, the south wind, the east wind, and the west wind. Now, we will only talk about the east wind and the west wind today, but I'll tell you this. Those winds were loving winds, and since the Creator sent them, He made it so that they could protect the people. Now, when on the other side, of that great and mighty expanse there was a beautiful village now that village oh that village it was one of the most beautiful villages that there ever could be and in there were artisans those who made the clothes and jewelry and adornments and everything that people wore and people slept on there were fishermen and there were farmers those who, all the folks who took care of the animals and took, made food and were just kind and loving people. And they, the kingdom was very happy for the king and queen ruled over them in peace and love and treated them as family. They also had many customs. And one of the customs was that the women every day would go down and bring the petitions of the whole family before the creator asking the winds to guard over their families. Now, the king and queen were very happy, and they had 16 daughters. Yes, 16. And their daughters were tall and short, and they had big smiles, and they had little smiles. They had big brown eyes and blue eyes and gray eyes. And they had small brown eyes and black eyes and gray eyes and blue eyes. And some of them were chubby. <laughs> and some of them were slender. But all of them were loved. And they knew it. And they reflected that. And the king and queen loved their children and took very good care of them. Now, the king and queen were mostly happy. But in their quiet place, when no one else was around, and they were just together, just the two of them, sometimes they would mourn that they did not have a son. You see, the king had always wanted to pass on his kingdom to a son. Although he knew all his daughters were very capable, and he loved them all, but he wanted to give them to his son. But he learned to be happy and content. And he would love upon his daughters every day. The queen would too, but the queen was a very particular person. 
and she wanted her husband to have his heart's desire. And so she came up with a list of things to ask the creator for every day. And one of them at the top of the list was a son. Now, she didn't want just any son. Oh no, her son must be brave. He must be a warrior, but he also must be kind and gentle. He must listen, but he also must have his own mind. He must be fierce and ready to fight for his kingdom, but he also must be ready to love them. She had a list of things that she wanted him to be. And so every day when she would go to put her petition, she would ask the east wind to carry her message to the creator. Now the east wind was a practical wind. She was a little cool. And she would blow around the queen's gale. And she would say to her, Are you sure, your majesty? You know that the creator, he will bring you the best of everything. He is good like that. He will bring you exactly what you need. You needn't come up with a list of your own. Oh, 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 I know all that. But I also know that there are certain things that I would like. All right, said the east wind. And so she blew around the queen. And up she went. She was only gone for a little while and she came back one day to the queen and she said, your majesty, I have spoken to the creator. He said that you will indeed in nine months time have the beautiful son that you wish and he will be all the things that you desire and more. But he has sent a warning. Oh, oh I'm so excited, said the queen. But what warning could the creator send to me? You must let the child do what he must do. And you must listen to him. For the moment that you do not listen to him, he will silence you. For his heart will belong only to the quilter's daughter. Now, the queen was so excited and could not wait to go back and tell her husband. And then she thought about what the wind had told her and said, Oh, that wind doesn't know what she's talking about. The quilter has no daughters. And it was true that the quilter did not have any daughters. The quilter was married to the weaver, who was the son of the sheep herder. The weaver was a good man, loving and kind man. And the quilter, she was a gentle and dear woman. And they had 16 sons. <laughs> yes, sons. Oh, their sons were rambunctious and wild and calm and gentle and artistic and manly and wonderful. And they ran all over the place. So much energy these boys had. And that quilter, she loved her son. And her husband, the weaver, loved upon them and taught them how each how to weave and how to tend to the sheep too. And even though the quilter loved all of her sons very much, in the quiet times, in the peaceful times, when it was just she and her husband, she would say, I would love to have a daughter, someone who I could pass on my quilting to. The boys, they are just too rambunctious to learn how to quilt. Someone who is artistic and beautiful, but I wouldn't care if she was the teeniest of beings. <laughs> I wouldn't care if she was Kidogo. Kidogo means just a little bit. And so every day when she would go and pray for her village and pray for the kingdom and pray for her family, at the end, she would tell her guardian when the West Wind, who was a trickster and a prankster. He had a big, loud laugh. <laughs> and he would say to her, Oh, Quilta, I know there is something that you want. What is it that you want, little one?
I, I just want a daughter. I know that it is wrong for me to ask, for I have been given so much. But I just want Kidogo. Just a little bit. A little girl whose hair I can braid and who I can play with and who I can give great things to. But it is not to be. I will understand. But please, thank the Creator for me. And the West Wind said, Oh, I will tell him. Stay here, my little one. I shall return. <laughs> and around the West Wind went. He whipped her gale off, teasing her. <laughs> Stop, West Wind, she said. And he went up, up, up. And he came right back down. And he said, Oh, my beautiful quilter, you have been given your heart's desire. For in nine months' time, you will have your daughter. She will be greater than any that you will know. She will have all the things that your heart desires and more. And she will be so beautiful and so wonderful that she will win the heart of the prince. Now, right away, the quilter said, But Westwind, the king and queen have no, no son. They have only daughters. <laughs> Not in nine months' time. <laughs> and up the wind went. And the quilter thought about what the west wind said. She was so happy and so excited. But she kept on her heart everything that the wind had told her, including the fact that her daughter would win the heart of the king. Now, nine months passed, and the weather changed, and then on to the quilter's house and in the castle, the castle compound, <laughs> there was born a beautiful son, a beautiful prince. Now, they named the prince Yumi for the day that he was born. The cats all over the kingdom came and bowed down to him. For the name Yumi means Prince of the Cats. The cats were very smart. And when they got close to him, they all went, Meow! Meow! To welcome the little prince. But when he raised his tiny hand, they all quieted. Now, there were a lot of things about Prince Yumi. One, from the very beginning, they could tell that he was smart. But he would talk all the time to himself, to other people. Before, in the beginning, they couldn't understand what he said. He would say, And they would say, Oh, is that so, young prince? He talked when he was awake. He talked when he ate. He even talks in his sleep. In fact, he talked in his sleep so much and so loudly that the king and queen had a special house built just for him and his nursemaid. And he would keep his nursemaids up all night long talking. You could hear him throughout the compound. Now, as Prince Yumi got older, they could understand what he said. And he said, what is that? I like that. Is it blue? Is it green? Oh, sisters, why is your hair long? Why is my hair shorter? Oh, I love you, sisters. What are you doing, mother? I want to be with you. Father, can I go with you? What is this? He was full of questions. And even though sometimes his questions were a little annoying, they were happy to have him around. Now, the quilter had a beautiful little daughter. Her name became Kidogo, for that was what she was. She was a tiny little thing, just a little bit. She had little hands and sweet little face. Her hair was in little beautiful curls, and she had 
big brown eyes. And Kidogo was the sweetest, kindest child. Now, um, she also would do something all the time. She would sing. La, la, la. All the time. She would do it when she was awake. She would do it when she was asleep. She would even sing as they bathed her. La, la, la. Her song was so sweet and gentle and kind that it would just make everyone relax and they would go to sleep. Yes, that Kidogo was a very special little girl. Now, when Prince Yumi was four years old, his mother saw that he was so full of energy, always running around asking questions, that one day she decided that it was time to take her little boy to the marketplace so that everyone in the kingdom could see him outside of the compound. Now, he loved the marketplace. There were so many smells and things to touch and so many things he wanted to know about. And he ran through asking questions. Mother, what is this? Oh, sisters, do you see this? Oh, this is such a pretty color. Oh, this would look nice on you, sister. Oh, and he just ran all through the house. <laughs> he was a lovely little boy. But all of a sudden, they could not hear him. And the queen got scared. Where is Pinchumi? We don't know, your highness. He took off through the marketplace, through the stalls. And so they went to every stall to look for the young prince. Then all of a sudden they heard, La, 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 la. And they heard it coming from the quilter's stall. And so they went there. And on top of a pile of quilts and rugs, they saw Prince Yumi laying next to a tiny little girl. And the two of them were holding hands. And both were sleeping peacefully. It was the first time that the prince had gone to sleep without talking in his sleep. It was so he were at home. And the little girl was his age. Whose stall is this? The queen asked. And the quilter said, It is my stall, your highness. And that is my little girl, Kidogo. Well, back into the queen's memory came the vision of that night. And she said, Your daughter, what is her name? It is Kidogo, said the quilter. She will come to the castle with us and stay with us until nightfall when my son goes to sleep and then she will go home. Now, the quilter was an obedient servant, but she had prayed for her Kidogo and she would not have anyone take her away. This is my daughter. She said, you do not demand me, my your majesty. I see that they are close, and I do not mind if they play together. But her brothers will come to get her each night. <laughs> Fine. Fine, said the queen. But she will make sure that he is asleep. Of course, your majesty. From that moment on, every night, every day, Kidogo would come and play with Prince Yumi. The two of them loved each other's company. They were the best of friends. And they grew, and they grew, and they grew. And soon they were both 14. Now, in this kingdom, when you turned 14 is when you learned what you would do for the rest of your life. 
you would learn the responsibilities of being a young man and a young woman. It was part of your rites of passage. Now one day, the queen was walking past the house of her daughters, and she heard two of her daughters talking. Oh, of course one day Yumi will marry Kidogo. I could tell he's starting to fall in love with her. And the other daughter said, Of course, and she will be our sister for real. We love her very much. She is so sweet. But the queen was angry. She wanted to pick the woman who would marry her son. She didn't care what the wind had said. She wanted to make sure that she was queen material. Now understand that the queen was once a common girl. She had worked on the farm when she was young. But she felt that she was above all that. And she wanted to make sure that her son married someone who was of royal stature. That night, as Yumi and Kidogo were saying goodnight to each other, the queen listened outside the chamber door. It is almost time for me to go home, Yumi. Oh, I know, Kidogo. But I have something special for you. What? And he reached inside of a little box and pulled out a pendant that looked like the moon. When I look up at the moon, Kidoko, I think of you, your eyes. They're so beautiful. I will love you forever. I give this to you for it is my promise that that love will be steadfast and not moving no matter how old we get. Now, Kidogo, even though she was very tiny and very sweet, she was also very practical. And she said, But Yumi, you know that your mother, the queen, does not want me to marry you. You also know that she will look for a princess for you, that you are my princess. Yumi said, <laughs> Perhaps, but I know that I will always love you too. But if it comes that you must marry another, know that you will always have a subject in your ki kingdom who will love you. Ashe? He said, Ashe, but you will see that just like the moon, I will always be there. They held each other close. And Kidogo said, lay down, Yumi, and I will sing you to sleep. She took the pendant and she put it around her neck and hid it beneath her shirt. And then she began to sing, oh, 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 oh. went to sleep. As Kidogo was leaving to go and join her brothers outside, the queen stood before her and said, you will not come back after today. It is time for Prince Yumi to follow his father and to learn to be a king. And I suppose you will learn to be someone's wife. But my son will marry someone who is great and mighty. Kidogo bowed to the queen and then she looked her in the eye, looking very much like her mother. She said, It is true, my your majesty, I am not a princess, but I love Yumi. And I will always be here for him. And when he chooses, I pray that he chooses me. She got into the wagon and she went away. Yumi took it very hard that his Kidogo would not be back. But he followed behind his father and did all that his father commanded of him. He went and learned all the things that a king must do, including taking care of his people. 
And when he went out, he would look for Kidogo. And sometimes he would see her in the marketplace with her mother. And he watched her, getting more beautiful every day. He also found out that she was learning to cook. I'm not a very good cook, she would sneak and tell him. I make things too hot. My mother says I use too many peppers. And they would chuckle together. And then a guard would say, Your Majesty, your father seeks you. Oh, of course. He would wink at Kidoko and walk away. Now, the West one and the East one had conversation. For the creator had told them that those two were meant to be together. And the two winds decided that it was time for them to help. It was almost time for Prince Yumi to turn 18. And upon his 18th birthday, he would choose the woman that he would marry. Now, it was not just a time for him to choose, for, but it was a time for women to be chosen. For in their kingdom, they would have tents set up and men would young men would come from all over and they would go through and meet each of the young ladies they would find out if they could cook if they could sew and how well they did each they would see what kind of a woman they were and they would meet their parents but each girl was covered from head to toe, the only thing that you could see was their eyes. For in that way, fathers and mothers felt that instead of looking at their girls' beautiful faces, they could judge by their personality and by their skill set. Now, the young men were not so lucky. They had to walk around as they were, so they would all dress in their best and go to seek out the young ladies. It was the day of Prince Yumi's 18th birthday. He was excited, for he knew exactly what he was going to do. He was going to go find his Kidogo. But the night before, the east wind came to him and said, Yumi, I am the east wind. Honor, east wind. I must tell you that your mother seeks another for you, but your Kidogo she awaits. Here is her song so that you will know. The West Wind taught it to me. <laughs> Yumi's heart leapt. Oh, I miss her so. And the West Wind came on. <laughs> I know. And I have told her what to do, for I will make sure that you pick the right girl. <laughs> and how will you do that, West Wind? Said Yumi. I have told Kidogo to make you stew. You must taste all the women's stew. But hers you will know, for it will have the hottest pepper. Oh my goodness, I know those peppers. They were very small, and they were very hot. I could never eat that. Oh, but you will know that it is hers. And if you love her, you will eat it. You will eat the whole pot. All right, I will. And he started by tasting that little pepper. Before he could even get it in his mouth, his tongue began to burn in his lips. But he ate the whole thing and it made his, it set his mouth on fire. But after a while, he got used to it and he began to sweat. Very good. You will also look for the moon. The moon? Oh, yes. Look among the quilts. If you see a moon, you will know that that is your Kidogo. Her father is a weaver. Remember that. Yes, I will. Very good. <laughs> Goodbye, East Wind. Goodbye, West Wind. 
And the West Wind went back to Kidogo and told her what to do. But that pepper is so hot, it will make him ill. Oh no, he will be fine. You just make sure that you make it as hot as you can. Mm -hmm. Of course, West Wind, honor to you. And to you, Kidogo. Blessings. <laughs> and away the West Wind went. The East Wind told him, You will also ask that each girl sing, and then you will know that it is your Kidogo. Yes. Thank you, East Wind. Are you all right, Prince Yes, I'm fine. I'll even be finer tomorrow. And away the East Wind went. Finally, after a while, even though the pepper was still hot on his tongue, Prince Yumi started to feel better. He didn't look forward to eating the hot pepper, but <laughs> he looked forward to seeing his kidogo. He sat at breakfast and he ate happily, but he only ate a little bit. What is wrong, son? Oh, I will go to choose my wife today, mother. Oh, you do not have to do that, my son. I will bring girls for you to choose. You don't have to go among those village girls. I want a village girl, mother. And he looked at his mother. She was very upset. She said, but son, I know what is best for you. The king looked at both of them, but he kept quiet. Prince Yumi looked at his mother. I love you, mother, and I honor you with my very life. But I look for my Kidogo. She is the only girl that I want to marry. And I will go and I will find her today. And if you do not approve of her, mother, you are silent to me. I will hear nothing that you have to say. And out he went. <gasps> How dare you speak to me that way? You are my son. But he was gone. And she rose to go after him. And the king put, her, put his hand upon his wife and said, My darling one, we have raised him to be a good, kind, and loving man. And he goes to find his equal. You must honor what he wishes. You must honor what the creator has put in place for him. Oh, the queen was so sad, and she sat down, and she wept. Meanwhile, Prince Yumi had gotten to the fair. <laughs> and that's where I'm going to stop. I know, a tease, right? <laughs> like I said, it's a very long story. Tomorrow, I will conclude the tired prince, and you will see that Prince Yumi even though he will go through an awful lot, both he and Kidogo will fulfill their destiny. I thank you all for listening to Milk and Cookies. Make sure that you drink your milk. Almond milk. Oh, this is mine. And you have your favorite cookies. <laughs> Love you. See you tomorrow night. Goodbye.